All right, hey everybody. Um, I'm actually going to make this quick video. Uh, I just came back from uh, helping my son move from Abilene, Texas up to Pennsylvania. And during the move I decided it would be really cool if I could take my... because I was, I was going to be driving a U-Haul back and I thought uh, it would be cool if I put my um, my mobile antenna, magnetic mobile antenna on the top of the U-Haul and then as I'm driving from Texas to Pennsylvania be kind of cool to see if I could reach anybody on the um, on the two meter band or the uh, 70 centimeter band on the way back. So almost like CB, you know, you know, trying to talk to truckers and stuff or whatever, but you know, obviously on the hand bands. So I said, well, so I put the antenna on the U-Haul and we started driving. And what I did is I had my little Bofang radio. Uh, obviously, I didn't have this antenna. I had it tied into my uh, magnetic antenna, which is a, another diamond antenna, but. Um, I loaded this app on my phone. Uh, this is my phone. And what I did is I loaded an app. It's the repeater app and repeater book app. And when you start it up, it tells you the repeaters that are in the local area. And I can tell you from being on the road, it does work. And actually, I think you don't even have to manually refresh it. There's a refresh rate, and I don't know what exactly what it is. It's a few minutes. But uh, it detects the repeaters within like a 20 mile range, roughly depending on the uh, environment you're in. So uh, what I did is I got in the vehicle, my battery's gonna die on my phone, sorry, um, and I started plugging in numbers based on these repeaters. And I had a little bad luck when I was in Abilene itself. I tested it in Abilene and talked to a couple people and was able to make it work, but it seemed like it took me a long time to program the phone because first my screen kept going off because my screensaver mode was set too quickly. So if you're going to use this app, make sure you turn your screensaver like to like five minutes. And what you do is you find a local repeater and find one that looks okay. Um, I like this one, uh, W1S. That's really good. That's actually right next door to where I'm at now. I'm in Deerfield, New Hampshire. That one's in Epsom, New Hampshire. But it tells you the frequency and the PL tone. But obviously you want to click on it and get some better information. What was cool about this is it tells you roughly... <clears throat> Um, where it is, see where it says heading northwest? So basically northwest of here is where that repeater is of my location based on my phone. So when I was driving I could actually look for locations that were, because I was heading east, east northeast, I could actually look for repeaters that were either east or north of where I was going so wouldn't waste my time trying to hit a repeater that I was going away from. So uh, when you click the screen you see better information. Uh, the band, the uh, tr receive and transmit it, the offset, and the PL tone. Basically, you need the receive frequency, the offset, and the PL tone to make this work. As I was driving, I could figure out that I could get quick enough to set this up. So what I did on my Bofang, or any radio, is I turn it on. Let's turn it on first. Channel mode. And I'm sorry if you can't see this very well. I'm in, I'm in channel mode right now. But if I hit the uh, change button up here, the orange change button, frequency mode. I can go to frequency mode. You could even, on a Bofang, you can even program two channels, but what I did is I put the, uh, a lot of times I would put the uh, bottom one on the national call frequency for two meters, and then I would use the top one and start, you know, modifying my frequencies. So I got pretty quick at it. I could actually go here, uh, find the frequency, and if you're in frequency mode on a Bofang, you just type it in. So for me, it would be four, 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 four three, three uh, eight, eight, five, five zero. zero. So there we go. I got the frequency in. Hit the menu, the menu item. Now, if I memorize the menu numbers, I could probably do it, but what I ended up doing on the road is I just would, would go up and down until I found the three that I needed to change, and it would save those locations so that I would go up and down from wherever I was at. So, hit menu, menu. start scrolling up to the first one, which would be CTSS, trans, I mean, transmit CTSS, which is PL tone. And then I would find the PL tone, which is 88.5. And I would whoop, change it. CTCSS. And then change it down to whoops, 85. Confirm. Lock it in. Go to my next menu, menu item, which one for me would be, come on, shift. It's a negative, it's a positive offset, so I would hit menu. Positive. Confirm. Then go to offset itself and type it in, which would be zero five zero zero. Well, I did it again. I did this a lot on the road. I would forget to hit the menu item again. I'm out of practice. Sorry. Oh, 
There we go. Offset frequency. Now I can type it in. Zero, five, zero, zero. Confirm. So now I'm actually tied into that repeater. That's all I needed to do. I need to put in the frequency, put in the offset, and put in the PL tone, and I was rocking and rolling. Um, there we go. Um, so now I'm in frequency mode, and I can talk to that repeater. If I ping it, it didn't respond back. It's weird. Um, bad example, I guess. So, um, five, eighty. Oh, PL tone eighty. Yeah, I get eighty. If I do eighty-five. I think I did. Let me just check the menu. Number. The offset's good. Positive offset. Eighty-five point four. Oh, I have the wrong CTS. Okay, hold on. CTCSS. Ah. There we go. Confirmed. So now we got the right one in. I'm trying to look at the video as I'm doing it. So if I ping it now. Yep. So I'm hitting it. Sorry about that. Um, I could have done a better job with this. So basically, as long as I have the freak with the receive frequency, the offset, and the peel tone, yep, I'm definitely receiving on that thing now. Okay. So this this little app works really cool, and then you can hit the back button, and then you can program another one if you wanted to. Or a few miles down the road, when you're doing 80, 75, 80 miles an hour down the highway, this number will change every couple minutes. So what I found when I did it is that I was hitting repeaters, but a lot of them, you know, a lot of repeaters are quiet. And, you know, some are active at certain times, some are active at others, usually later in the day. So I wasn't hitting a lot. <clears throat> so what I decided to do was I used a feature on here, a search feature. And I would type in the next kind of big town or city that I was heading toward. And within 100 miles, I would hit, I would program that all in and I'd start trying to ping it within like 50 miles. And I got better luck. I was hitting a couple people and the best one I hit, if I type in Knoxville. Uh, Knoxville. Not seeing it, Knoxville, Tennessee. There we go, Knoxville, Tennessee, and hit it. And there's all my Knoxville, Tennessee stations that come up. Um, W4KEV was the best one. Uh, there's a, there's a little network they have down there, and I guess there's only a couple different ones in the country, but um, that are tied together like this. And they have a few that are in the uh, eastern Tennessee area. And there's some on UHF and VHF. And what I did is I took the VHF one, or two meter one. And I plugged in these numbers, just like I just showed you. And once you do this a couple of times, you get pretty quick at it. And as you can see by the mileage on here, I think it tells me the miles. Oh, because I'm, I'm doing a search, so it's not going to tell me the miles. It says it's, it's actually zero miles because it's in Knoxville. But uh, I'm up in New Hampshire, so obviously I'm not going to be able to hit it. Um, but I plugged it in my radio, and I was able to hit that repeater and about 25 30 miles out I was starting to be able to talk to people and what was really cool about that is it was an active repeater and I was able to talk to people for over an hour I mean back and forth hitting people back and forth and um, it's a really good group down there actually and so if you're traveling through Knoxville I would definitely encourage you to hit that repeater and um, what I get what I did is I just plugged it uh, brought it up on my repeater book and did the search function plugged in the Knoxville numbers uh, this one's still on Epsom sorry and let me just do it real quick so you can see how quick I can get it. Um, if I bring it up, I need the frequency. Uh, let's see if I can do it. One-handed. One, One four, four, five, five two, two, three, three zero. zero. Then go into menu. Menu. Now I'm already at my last one that I did, so let's change the... CTCSS. Change it to 103.5. Confirm. Confirm. And then it'll go up the menu. To change negative and positive. Change it to negative. Confirm. And whoop, offset. Offset frequency. Zero zero six zero. Confirm. There we go. So now I can ping that repeater, which won't respond because I'm way too far. Um, that's it. Uh, so I did that what? 45 seconds. Um, that was really cool, and like I said, I was able to talk to those guys for a while, and then I was so interested in talking to them, they were doing like a swap meet, which they do Friday nights at 8. If you haven't gone to that, uh, to that, uh, swap meet they have there, it's pretty cool. This guy named Roger does it, uh, 8 o'clock on Friday evenings, Eastern Time. And if you plug in these numbers, um, if you can see them, if they focus okay, if you plug in those numbers, you can actually listen to them, uh, Friday night at 8, um, 
and they run for over an hour on that. It's really cool. And actually, uh, what I did is I was so interested that I actually loaded the um, Echo Link app um, on my you know on my phone, and I think I can still hit it. Of course, I'll still be able to hit it, but my phone's battery might die. Yep, so I'm still on. So um, I could actually, st and what I did is I used it on my phone and listened to the swap meet when I got out of range. When I and actually, what, I didn't go out of range, my battery died. I was using my Bofeng so much talking to these guys that uh, I killed my battery. So um, I did it on my phone and, and contributed to that uh, swap meet, that check-in for uh, the net swap meet, and it was really cool. So um, that's kind of a couple things I was able to do on my trip. I was able to use the repeater book app and talk to people on the road, uh, going heading from Texas to Pennsylvania. And the best one was in Knoxville, obviously. And then when I wanted to keep talking to them, I loaded the Echo Link app, which was really simple to load. Looked for the repeater, put it in, and I was able to uh, talk uh, no problem. Um, uh, that's pretty much it for my little video on that. I wanted to just kind of put that out there in case people were looking at, uh, you know, talking to people on the road. I know with CB it's a little easier because of the HF frequencies, but um, if you want to play around with um, your radio in your car and you're driving on a long trip, uh, on a Bofang actually it's easy. I'm not sure how it would be on other units. Um, if you know the menu item numbers, you could probably type it in pretty quickly. Um, I have an FT2800 Yesu. I, I don't have it in my vehicle right now, but if I put it in, I'm not sure how difficult that would be. But uh, for the Bofang, it's pretty quick. So uh, hopefully this venue, uh, menu, uh, this uh, video helps you out if you're looking at traveling. And uh, 73s, and uh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that, 73, not 73s. And um, uh, if this helps anybody, I hope it does. And uh, hopefully be able to do somebody some good. So uh, you all have a good day.